Hi, I'm Matthew. Today we're going to be talking about a few concepts related to both virtual memory and caches and how they fit together. The first one is the translation look-aside buffer. This is a cache specifically used to translate virtual addresses to physical addresses. Remember, a normal cache is a way to take an address and return some memory that is at that address. But there are many different types of caches. And the translation look inside buffer is specifically designed to take in virtual pages and return the physical page associated with that virtual page. This is useful because when we're thinking about translating a virtual page to a physical page normally, we need to do a page table walk. And the problem with the page table is that the page table itself is stored in memory. So when we want to translate a virtual page to a physical page, we need to access memory and then depending on how many levels our page table has, we may need to access memory multiple times. And if our page table itself isn't cached, then just translating the address from a virtual address to a physical address can take a lot of time. The translation look aside buffer is a cache specifically designed to remove that latency. And since it's a cache, it's usually a lot, lot faster than doing all of those sequential memory accesses. Now let's talk about physically addressed caches and virtually addressed caches. If you remember back to when we were thinking about our data caches, the data cache takes in the address that we want to read and returns the data that is at that address. But now we have to think about whether we want our cache to take in a physical address and return the data or a virtual address and return the data. The physical, physically addressed cache that takes a physical address is slower but a bit simpler because we just assume that we always translate our virtual address to a physical address before going to the cache, that makes it slower because translating physical address, sorry, virtual address to the physical address takes time. However, because it's a physically addressed cache, we can be sure that all processes um, think the same way about physical addresses and what is in physical memory. There's no need to clear the physically addressed cache between different processes when we switch to one, from one process to another. The virtually address cache, on the other hand, takes in a virtual address and gives the data that should be stored at that virtual address. That's faster because you don't need to translate your virtual address to a physical address before accessing the cache, but it's more complex because each process, two different processes could have the same virtual address that map to different spots in physical memory, and at the same time you could have two processes that are mapping to the same spot in physical memory under different virtual addresses. That means that every time you swap from one process to another, the virtually addressed cache would need to be invalidated, completely cleared all of its dirty blocks written back, as opposed to the physically addressed cache where there's no need to do that between processes. So now that we've gone over these different concepts, let's look at an example problem where we work through um, memory accesses for both a physically addressed cache and a virtually addressed cache and see what the average number of cycles they take is. So now we want to work through this problem of calculating the average time it takes, or the average number of cycles it takes to take our virtual address and return the data that we want given a physically addressed cache. In a physically addressed cache, the way a virtual address is converted into the data follows this flowchart. We first, before we can access our cache, since it's a physically addressed cache, we need to somehow convert our virtual address to the physical address. So the first thing we do when we get our virtual address in is we access our TLB. And if the TLB is a hit, that means that in that TLB cache, we were able to map the virtual page of our virtual address to a physical page. And so we were able to convert our virtual address to a physical address in the TLB, and we can go straight to the cache with that physical address. If the TLB is a miss, then we have to do a page table walk. We need to walk through the page table and see if there is a virtual address in the system that is mapped to, or if that virtual address is mapped to a physical address. If that's a hit, then the page table walk succeeded and we were able to convert to a physical address. We can update our TLB with that new mapping of virtual page to physical page, and we can go straight to the cache with that physical address. If the page table walk misses as well, that means that there is no virtual, there is no physical page corresponding to this virtual page and we need to go all the way to disk to get the data that we want. And after we go to disk, at the same time, we would be moving that into memory, and we would also probably be moving it into the cache and updating the TLB as well, all in this disk access. But 
Outside of that case, if we got to the cache with a physical address, that means our data is stored somewhere in physical memory. If it's a hit in the cache, then we don't need to actually go to physical memory because it was stored in the cache. But if it's a miss in the cache, then we do need to go to memory with that physical address that we had to get the data that we want. So the three different places you could actually return the data in this situation are the page fault, accessing disk, the miss on the cache when you go to memory, and just finding the data in the cache and returning it. So in order to calculate the average time it takes to return the data given this physically addressed cache, um, it'll be easiest if we just go through filling in some of the inf information on this flowchart, starting with the latencies of all these different components. We're given that the TLB takes five cycles to complete, the page table walk takes 40 cycles to complete, The page fault, when you have to go all the way to disk, takes 50,000 cycles to complete. Updating the TLB, we assume, can be done in parallel with accessing the cache, so we don't have any latency for updating the TLB. But accessing the cache, we know, it takes two cycles. And accessing memory here takes 40 cycles. And of course, if there was a cache hit, then you don't need to access anything else, and you can just return the data that you got. So now that we have those latencies, let's go through and add the percent chance of going the different directions at each stage of the flowchart. So the TLB has a hit rate of 98%, so you have a 98% chance of accessing the TLB and going to the cache with the physical address that you got, and 2% chance of needing to do a page walk. When you're in the cache, you have a 90% chance of getting a hit and a 10% chance of getting a miss. And then for the page fault, for the page table walk, whenever you're given a page fault rate, realize that that is the rate for all virtual addresses, for all accesses. And so we can't just say that this is a 0.01% chance of missing because then the actual percentage of accesses that would result in a page fault would be 2% times 0.01%. We want the total percentage of all accesses to result in a page fault to be 0.01%. So we need to calculate what percentage this needs to be so that 2% times that gives us our page fault rate of 0.01%. And to do that, we just divide 0.01% is 0.0001, we can divide it by 2%, and that gives us what this percentage needs to be. 0 0.005 is half a percent. And then, of course, that means that we have a 99.5% chance of hitting in this scenario. So now that we have all the percentages, we have all the latencies, Solving this problem is just a matter of going through the flowchart and calculating, um, just adding up all the percentages multiplied by the latencies that occur under those percentages. So starting from the top, every single virtual address, when we pass it in to the system, we first need to access the TLB, which will take five cycles regardless of what happens afterwards. After that, we have a 98% chance of going this direction and 2% chance of going this direction. So I'm just going to split those up into two different lines for ease of, um, for ease of writing. We have a 2% chance here and a 98% chance here. We'll be adding those together. If we take the 98% chance route going towards the cache, then we will have two extra cycles of latency for accessing the cache every time. And then we have a 10% chance after that of incurring another 40 cycles. So we have a 0.1% chance of incurring 40 cycles. But that's it. If we have the 90% situation, we don't have any more cycles, and that concludes the cache access. If we go the 2% route after hitting the TLB, so we, not hitting the TLB, we had a miss in the TLB, then we need to do a page table walk which will incur us 40 cycles, minimum. 
added on to that, we have half a percent chance of having to go 50,000 cycles. And we have a 99.5% chance of going this direction instead. There's no latency here, but when we do go that 99.5% direction, we'll have to do the cache access again, which is the same situation as it was here. It'll be two cycles for the cache access itself, and then a 10% chance of another 40 cycles. So in here, we just have another 2 plus 0 0.1 times 40. Da, da. And so calculating all this, adding it all together, gives us that the average number of cycles that it takes to convert our virtual address and get the data that we want is 16.7994 cycles in the physically addressed cache. Now we're going to walk through and do a similar calculation for the virtually address cache with a slightly different flowchart. So now we want to work through the flowchart for the virtually addressed cache and figure out what the average number, number of cycles it will be to take our virtual address and return our data. Virtually address cache operates slightly different from the physically address cache. When we take our virtually, virtual address in at the beginning, we can go immediately to our cache because our cache accepts virtual addresses. And if we hit, we can just return the data that we got straight up without ever needing to convert our virtual address to a physical address. Otherwise, if we miss in the cache, then we do need to convert our virtual address to a physical address. So we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll go to the TLB. If the TLB has that mapping of the virtual page to the physical page, we can convert our virtual address to our physical address immediately after the TLB and go to memory with the physical address to get the data that we want. Otherwise, we need to do a page table walk through the entire page table if we find that our virtual page of that virtual address maps to a physical page. Then we can hit update the TLB and go to memory with the physical address that we obtain. Otherwise, it's a page fault. If our page table walk does not produce any physical page, that means that our virtual page does not map to a physical page, and we need to go all the way to disk to get the data that we want. It would probably then be moved into memory, updating the cache and whatnot. So, to work through this problem again, there are three locations here, here, and here, where it's possible to return our data from. And we want to do the same thing we did before, where we add in the latencies and the percentages to this flowchart and calculate the average latency for the entire system. So cache again has a latency of two cycles, TLB five cycles, memory access takes 40 cycles, page table walk takes 40 cycles, and if we are so unlucky to incur a page fault, it will take 50,000 cycles to access disk. We again assume that we can update the TLB at the same time that we're accessing memory, so there's no latency there, and then just returning the data that we get from the cache obviously is the same as returning the data after accessing memory, or after accessing the disk, so there's no latency there. Now we want to go through with the percentages again, so cache has a hit rate of 90%, miss rate of 10%, the TLB has a hit rate of 98%, miss rate of 2%, and then for the page table walk, remember again, the miss rate of the page table walk is not the same as the page fault rate. The page fault rate is the rate of page faults for all accesses to the system. So we want 10% times 2% times whatever this is to be equal to 0.01%. So we need to do some division. That divided by 10% times 2%, and the result of that is 5%. And so we know that our miss rate is 5% for the page table walk, meaning that 95% of our page table walks result in a hit, where we get the physically addre physical address that we want. So now we can go through again and just work through the flowchart, adding up the latencies and multiplying by the percentages as appropriate to go down the different branches. 
So to start off with, when we bring in a virtual address, we always access our cache first to see if there's a cache hit. And that is always two cycles of latency. And now we have a 90% chance of having no other latencies, just returning the data straight from there. Otherwise, we have a 10% chance of incurring some extra latency. In that 10% chance, we always have five extra cycles. And then we can go down two paths here. We can either go down the 98% path, or we can go down the 2% path. Down, down the 98% path, um, we will just access memory, and it'll be 40 cycles, and that'll be it. Otherwise, if we go down the 2% chance path, we have the page table walk, which is also 40 cycles, but then we have a chance of incurring a page fault or going to memory instead. We have a 5% chance of incurring a page fault, so 0 0.05 times 50,000. And then we have a 95% chance of updating the TLB, finding the page we want, and going to memory with it. So that would be another 40. We have a 95% chance of incurring 40 cycles of penalty. I'm not exactly sure how many parentheses I need to close this, but I think it's around that many. And then if you were actually to multiply and add all of this up, the average number of cycles that it would take to do an access to memory is 11. 0.576. So just like we theorized, the virtually addressed cache is a little bit faster than the physically addressed cache, but of course it comes with the drawback of needing to evict everything in the cache and invalidate it every time you swap processes. And so that's an overview of how you might tackle these sorts of virtually addressed and physically addressed cache problems in homeworks or exams, and I hope you now have a better understanding of the differences between them.